Chords and Notes Nation, it's time for something. Because I just listened to something. Something uh, quite amazing. <clears throat> I'm Brian, by the way. <laughs> if you haven't figured that out already, that's who I am. And you are Chords and Notes Nation because you are watching my channel, Chords and Notes. So welcome. Um, welcome back, all of you who are regular viewers, subscribers, those of you who are new viewers, and hopefully new subscribers. Welcome to my channel, where you always get honest, raw, and unedited videos. I do reactions, reviews, and analyses, which is what this one is going to be. Um, comparisons. I've got a slew of other types of videos that I've done over the couple of years I've been doing this. Uh, audio book reviews, book reviews, a um, couple of do-it-yourself projects and some, um, what else have I done? Random thoughts. I don't know. Check out the playlists. You'll see. There's quite a few videos. I'm going to do a little bit of everything, I think, because that's just kind of how this brain works. I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. I'm somewhere in between, and I'm okay with and I know you guys are too. Make sure you praise God every day for the things that you have that start starting with the breath that you draw into your lungs and the fact that your heart is beating every single day. Um, there's many challenges we have in this life, uh, but we can get through all of them if we rely upon Him and we understand our relationship with Him. That being said, uh, and I took some notes here, so I'm going to be looking at my notes. So don't worry, I'm not ignoring you. <clears throat> Yamandu Costa, and I hope that I pronounced that right. I know someone has mentioned that my pronunciation of Portuguese words is sounds more Spanish than anything. Well, I don't speak Portuguese. What do you got to say about that? <laughs> uh, so my attempt at it is is to be uh, tonight to be nice and. I have a lot of Brazilian fans out there, um, so I thought it would be nice to at least say hola mois amigos, <clears throat> and if it sounds Spanish, that's because uh, here in the United States we do have a lot of Spanish speakers, and I have friends that uh, are Hispanic, um, and I've been around Spanish enough to pick up on the, I guess, the dialect. That being said, okay. <clears throat> so this video is about Yamandu Costa, who I didn't know before this video even existed. Um, the song that was presented to me, uh, Choro Loco, the video was 3 minutes and 48 seconds long. Uh, in these review and analysis videos, you will not hear the music. What I will do, um, if I have the opportunity, is I will... Put the URL below in the description, along with other information. Um, yeah. Who? I should at least give credit to the person who requested it. Ricardo Miranda. There you are, sir. This is the song. And I have a feeling I'm going down the rabbit hole with this one, after what I saw. Um, the first thing that I, I noticed in this is that he uses a seven-string classical acoustic guitar. Uh, and those of you who don't are unaware, classical acoustic has um, metal strings for the low-end strings and nylon for the high-end and um, versus all metal for like a regular acoustic guitar. But what was a little bit different about this one is that typically on seven-string guitars, you have um, the seventh string is uh, uh, one of the high end strings, so uh, it would be uh, typically they tune it to the key of B. That that string is in B. This time it was there were um, four low end strings. I'm just going to assume that the low string was a B as well. Um, because I don't know 
it sounded like it was in standard standard tuning, uh, but I don't know for certain whether it was or not. <clears throat> so really cool there, and he has this. Um, it, it, go see the video if, if I can get the link in there. Um, he has this inlay on his fretboard that was driving me nuts. I'm like, why does he have this string underneath all these other strings? Because that's what it looked like to me. And then I was watching it closer, and I'm like, oh, that, that, those are the fretboard inlays. Um, it kind of looks like a string to me. Uh, <laughs> so that was quite interesting. So anyways, um, so you had this piece of music that was uh, about three and a half minutes long, maybe a little bit longer. And it was very jazz fusion sounding. Um, the best way that I can describe it, because I've heard that kind of sound before, and um, there were there were some projects that three guitarists had put together: Aldi Miola, Paco De Lucia, and John McLaughlin, uh, and they put together some some CDs that were mainly, uh, well, acoustic guitar. And those, the two that this sounds like a fusion of, the jazzy kind of style would be more like the Al Di Miola playing. And there was some, I have to say it, you guys correct me, please don't take offense to it, but there was some uh, Spanish sounds, um, or Latin, how's that more? Latin sounds, uh, which would have been more like the Paco de Lucia sound. So if you were to take those two sounds and kind of fuse them together, um, this is what it sounded like to me, that Yamandu Costa, his sound in this song was. And I have yet to explore any of his other songs, so he may, this may be his signature sound, or just in this song. Uh, but that was really good because I enjoy those guitar players and I enjoy that kind of sound. And, and this really intrigued me. Um, it was a shorter song, so which is nice, especially when it's just one guitar player. You don't have this extremely long journey <clears throat> that you have to uh, go on. And, you know, as a, as a guitar player myself, um, it's... It, and I'm certainly not that kind of guitar player. I find it astonishing that when you have so much movement within a song, so many things going on, and I'll touch on that in a minute, to be able to remember it all and to play it flawlessly is is a lot of talent, for sure, definitely. Um, <clears throat> I, he was using a lot of different chord shapes, that maybe because there were seven strings, it looked a little bit different. But I wasn't familiar with a lot of those shapes. Uh, but he was he was throwing a lot of shapes in there, and it was it was nice. It was nice to see him traveling uh, the entire length of the fretboard in one song. Um, <clears throat> his his finger picking technique looked really spot on, uh, from what I understand from that type of finger picking. I've I've attempted it myself and looked at some instructional videos and, and watched other players. Um, it, it looked like his hand was in the right position. He was using the right uh, technique with his with his fingers. Um, something else that I picked up on is his scale work. It's just absolutely astounding. Um, it's really, really, really good. Oftentimes when you're playing a scale, um, it just sounds like a scale. Um, and, and I could pick that up within what he was doing, but he intertwined it with a lot of those different chord shapes, and uh, he made it work where it wasn't just, oh, uh, he's playing a scale. It was like, oh, he's playing a scale, <laughs> and that sounds really good. Uh, so good job on that one, and I really think this is what guitar mastery looks like, to tell you the truth. Um, when, when you have so much of yourself dedicated to an instrument or anything in that for that matter, uh, you you reach this level of mastery where, to someone on the outside, it looks like it's just second nature. It's just so fluid, and it's so uh, effortless that it's almost impossible uh, 
to duplicate. Um, or at least that's the way it appears. And that shows you that he has a lot of passion for what he does. He puts a lot of time and effort into it because very rarely will you come across someone that can just pick up anything and just do it like that. There's always a path that you have to follow to get there. And that path is always filled with challenges. And uh, it tests your determination. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I think that's all I have for this one. So, I mean, I was really, really pleased with this sound. And this is definitely an artist that I will be listening to. I think what I'm going to do... Um, as I, just thinking here, what I want to do is, is uh, restart my Patreon page. Uh, and, and what I'll do there, if you guys want those reactions where the music is actually in the video here, uh, I think we'll do that through Patreon. I'm still deciding how I want to uh, approach Patreon and, and where that's going to fit in my schedule. I know... I mean, I still work for a living. This isn't what I do for a living. So this is secondary. And I know once I go down that rabbit hole of Patreon, there's going to be a lot of requests. And I have to keep up with it. So I have to make sure that I get to a certain point where I can. Uh, where it's going to be important for you guys, if you guys can help me out here, number one is put some constructive comments below if you enjoyed these kind of videos um, and uh, you know likes and dislikes help me decide how I need to tailor these videos and then um, do what you can to spread the word really appreciate more subscribers I can do this more often and uh, more people will uh, hopefully enjoy it so that's all I have for this, you guys. Be well, stay well. Read Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Get it in your heart. Get it in your head. And live it. It's awesome. Take care.